Dojo. It's Friday night. This is episode 108. Lucky 108 of Smoke Night Live. And this is a special episode because we are on location. We don't normally get out of dojo, the Dojo Magic Curve submarine. Yeah, it's, it's, you got to dock it. And yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, you know, sometimes we're off the coast of Russia. Yeah. Talking with Russian spies. But usually we're in the Magic Curve submarine. But tonight, we ventured out of uh, Dojo headquarters, and we are here at the world. This is just a secret. It is. It's I very mean, it's classified. A, it's a secret lair, uh, or lair, and this is the Blind Man's Puff secret lair. So we're here tonight with Emmett Malone. Emmett, welcome back to Smoke Man Live. Hello, hello. So Emmett, as you know, is the guy behind Blind Man's Puff, and if you aren't familiar with the blog, you should check it out. It's really unique because uh, they review cigars, but you guys review them uh, blind in the sense that your reviewers uh, don't know what they're smoking. That's right. So you Which send out a cigar. Be doing later. We're going to do that. We're going to do it soon, in fact. This is real-time blind. We're going to do On the show, we are going to – I'm going to – have him smoke a cigar that he doesn't know what it is. And he's going to have me smoke a cigar that I don't know what it is. And uh, we'll tell you our thoughts live, which is, uh, this is risky. It's like flying, yeah. it's like doing a tightrope without a net. That's right. Because I could make a complete fool of myself, which I've never done before no, on, never. on live on my live show. But, hey, not only that, but we're going to talk a little IPCPR. Yeah. Because, uh... I uh, haven't got to hear what your thoughts were yet on the show uh, in Vegas, like what's new, what you thought was cool, uh, some of your things you're excited about, some of the things that you were disappointed with, that kind of stuff. So we'll get into all of that. But I say, oh, by the way, before we start this, Dojo, if you have a question for either myself or Emmett, just post it on the Dojo with hashtag AskDojo. And uh, I'll see if we can uh, include some some of those questions yeah. later in the show. Not only that, one other thing. The big giveaway this week, we are giving away some Velvet Rats and Ooh. two uh, custom paintings by Subculture Studios that have the Dojo logo custom painted on there. Ooh. They're really they're really cool. And so two lucky winners. Now here's the deal. Uh, the winners were picked right before the show. And this week we picked them randomly. So at the end of the show, uh, we will uh, show who the winners were. And I, and I can describe how we did the random pick, although it's sort of boring. But um, it has to do with uh, counting the entries and then uh, determining all the people that had an entry. And then if they posted it on Facebook or Twitter, they got extra entries. And all of those entries essentially go into a randomizer. And we pick two names. So that's how it works. So if you posted your entries on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you essentially got more chances to win. It's kind of like uh, you know buying extra lotto tickets. There you go. You know, you instead of one in ninety-five million, now you get two in ninety-five million, <laughs> three in ninety-five million, four. So your odds of winning went way up. I like it. So at the end of the show, we'll announce those winners. So stay tuned for that. But hey, let's get right into it right now. Uh, I've got a cigar that I've given to Emmett to smoke, yeah, let me, uh, and Emmett has given me a cigar. We do not know. Matt, nope. can you verify that we do not know what these are? Definitely. Let me see. I do not know. Here it is for all you Facebook Live. Yeah, by the way, we're simulcasting this live on Facebook Live on the um, Blind Man's Puff uh, Facebook account, which is pretty cool. It's also a first. This is also a first. This is real high tech. A simulcast, so uh, that's pretty exciting. So if you like Facebook and you want to uh, and you want to interact via Facebook, you can do it that way as well. Um, so Eric was cool enough to actually 
make put my logo on here. I didn't get yeah, that fancy. Man. I mean, this, uh, that's how this the, guy went all out. That's how the dojo rolls. Man. <laughs> we don't we don't jack around. <laughs> so let's let's uh, describe. Uh, let, let me give you my thoughts. Yeah, let's see. Let's on see. this, there there. There's not a discernible smell, aroma. I honestly cannot. It's pretty smoky. <laughs> it, 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 it could be just that it is a little smoky in here, but I can't really get a discernible smell. It's a little, um, it's actually sort of a crooked, there's a little bit of a crookedness to it. It looks like a very rough roll, which is kind of cool. I dig that. The cap appears to be single, but my eyes suck. So uh, I'm gonna. You have better eyes than me. Would you say that? Oh, yeah, it's a okay. single cap. Because when I look at that, I have or a little no bit of a hard time. Yeah, there might not. There might not be. It well. might be no cap. Yeah, <laughs> and it's real rough looking. You know, it almost looks like some sort of right came off a tree or something. You know. <laughs> All right. So I'm excited to light it up. What do you? What do you? So what this, are your thoughts? This one is. Uh, not no wall of smoke going on there either. But this one's ready to light. It's already it's already pre-cut right there. Wow. And it's got a hole poked in it already. It's got a hole poked in it. I don't even have it. to cut it or anything. See? I, I can figure that's, out that's, that's I bring crazy stuff. stuff. What would you say about the color? It's definitely the lightest wrapper I've ever seen. Pretty much. Mm. <laughs> it's uh, probably Connecticut. Okay. A little, uh, little rough on the wrapper there. Not the not the best roll I've ever seen. I, I mean, you can kind of see the, the marks there. It's, uh, uh, let's. What do you say? Let's yeah, cut let's them up. It up. Let's cut these up, and we're gonna see. I don't have to cut mine. And we're gonna see what. Uh, <laughs> Nifty. Huh? We're gonna see what they are. Dojo, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever tried um, smoking something blind, but what you can do is, if it's fun to like find a friend and and send each other stuff, and don't tell them what it is, and give it a try. It's kind of neat. Gives you a different appreciation for. What do you say, Emmett, that do you think how much do you think it affects your smoking experience when you know what the cigar is and you're you know you're really looking forward to it because you, you think it's gonna be good? I smell some wacky flavor. Quite a bit. Um, I I'd say I pay attention like at least three times harder when it's blind just because if I'm smoking something else, I'm usually watching a baseball game or uh, whatever. I'm not paying complete attention to it. But when, but when you're like, so when you have no idea what it is, you don't know what to expect. So you have to, you have to write all the notes and uh, think of the brand yourself. Yeah, so. Like you have Daredevil, your senses are heightened. Your senses are heightened, right? Right. Hey. All right. So at first, hmm. yeah. At first, uh, I can tell it's a tight draw. It has a tight draw. Mm -hmm. It's a tight draw. Tight draw. So this uh. It's a lot like cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, that's, it's, that's what all I'm getting at this part. That's a draw. <laughs> draw is oh, fantastic. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's like a draw is great. Okay, so we have I a mean, good draw. This, yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give this a compliment. Mm -hmm. The uh, the taste of my tongue, not the smoke, but just the taste of my tongue. It's kind of salty, and it's not terrible. You're gonna be shocked when you find out what that one. Yeah, this I'm still getting a lot of cardboard. You're gonna be shocked when you find out what that is. Um, you're, no, you're gonna be shocked. Um, this isn't terrible. This isn't terrible. It's not terrible. That's good. That's a um, that's a winning endorsement. You know. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a hint. We have reviewed that on the site. That's a big hint. Okay. Well, it doesn't have much of a finish. So there's some some flavor right off the get go, but uh, other than that, like there's no, there's like it just drops right off. Give me a guess on country. So, give you a hundred dollars if you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it's Cuban. Okay. What about that? You know what that <laughs> you know what it is, don't you? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but that's what it tastes like. <laughs> it tastes Cuban. Oh. It tastes Cuban to me. Right? Cuban cigars have that musky flavor and this has a muskiness to it. What kind of price point would you put on that? 
Well, the problem is it won't stay lit. It won't stay lit. You know, use the triple torch here. Right. You need to burn it. Lit. Just burn the crap out of it. All right. Price point on it? Um, two, two bucks. Okay. Three, three bucks maybe. What do you think on that? Mm. Starting to get maybe a little bit, of, a little bit of cedar possibly. Oh, some, some kind of wood, a real flavor. An actual flavor. Maybe like, <laughs> maybe like balsa wood. Or not actual, actual, balsa wood. It's, actual, it's, it's very, balsa wood. It's very light. That's what it is. It's very it's light. The balsa wood. It's a special cigar. You know what? It's not terrible. I would smoke this golfing. Golfing? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but I got to say, it's, it's got to be machine made just because the holes punched in it and the, the good draw. You know, I, mm. That's my guess. This is a. Uh, I'm getting a definite harsh flavor now. <laughs> yeah. Um, after I got a lick all the way. Um, but I'd say in a pinch, in a pinch, it's not terrible. All right. It's not terrible. Should we, um, should we... Yeah, let's do the reveal on these. We're just screwing around with you guys. These are... Yeah. We, uh, these are pre... We don't know what they are, but the idea was to give each other the, the crappiest cigar we could find, find <laughs> and just review it. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what that one okay. is. You are dead on. That is a Cuban... Wow. That is a Cuban peso cigar. Yeah. <laughs> so this costs literally about three cents. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you the... Uh, Dang. Dang. I brought these back from oh, Cuba. Look at that. They are, there's only a couple brands in them, and they're really hard to find. You have to go into like the local markets and stuff. These are the Selectos. And yeah, you literally get a bundle of 25 for a buck. Huh. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's legit Cuban. It's what the real Cuban people smoke. It's um, one of the, you know, it's it's not terrible, but not one of the best Cubans I've ever had. Yeah, <laughs> some of these uh, really look like dog poop. I picked it. I, wow. I picked a good one for you. They actually have bands. Though. Yeah, they actually have bands. You can kind of see the super lumpy there. Now, I feel bad putting this out now. This is Cuba. Well, you can light it back up. Later. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah. Plus, I have more. Like I'll smoke them. They're literally home. about three cents. I mean. All right. Well, not, th thank you for that, Emmett. That was very nice of you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you want to guess what uh, what you might be smoking? Mm. I'm gonna go with uh, El Producto. <laughs> Am I way off? Okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is my dad used to smoke El Producto. This is what it is. El Producto. El Whoa. Producto. Oh, <laughs> God, get this. Get this. Is it like super old? This cigar is 38 years old. You are shitting me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. So when I was like a teenager, yeah, that's crazy. When I was a teenager, I went uh, uh, played some pool with some friends, and I bought these El Producto, of like yeah. four or five boxes of these. You know, the boxes are like five pounds. Right? Yeah. And Did it, was it? Were they in tubes then? No, no. It was like, like a. It was like a cart. It's like I should have brought the box. Because I think they come in I glass tubes box. now. Maybe I'm not sure. But anyways, um, so like maybe three years ago. I'm rummaging through some old stuff from my mom's house, and I find the box, and I rehydrated it that's, over the last two years. That's awesome. So that cigar is one of the cigars I smoked as a teenager. That is, uh, this, actual, is a, this is a classic right here, you guys. Classic. This is, this is this something is, special. That's funny. We both classic. picked something that Dude, you supposed nailed to be, it, though. supposed to be crappy, but you nailed it. Yeah, See, that's why I blind man's puff. It's nostalgia. <laughs> blind man's puff. These guys are legit. Ooh. He nailed it right on the money. Now you can even. Uh, hey, you nailed it too, man. Mm -hmm. Cuban cheap. Got it. You can throw it back on there. Yeah. All right, so you want to do the real deal? Let's do it. Let's do the real deal. All right. All right, so uh, here's the real one that Emma gave me. So this. And then as soon as we light these, we'll start talking. Uh, we'll start talking uh, IPCPR and some other cigar stuff. Wait, if, you, if you have questions, there's a picture uh, happening. Post picture happening. <laughs> Photo op. All right, so uh, thank you for this, Emmett. And uh, Thank you. let's see how she smokes. Oh, oh, let's talk about what it looks like. I'm going to say this looks like a triple cap, but again, my eyes suck. Um, so triple cap, it, it's a little bit rough of a roll, but the tobacco looks nice. Looks like nice tobacco. And it looks like sort of like a Corona, maybe a Corona Extra, I don't know. At Lonsdale, I don't know what its size it is. Corona, maybe? I believe it's Corona Gorda. Okay, Corona Gorda. 
So this one, this is a pretty hefty cigar here. It's definitely a Toro size. Looks to be a triple cap. A little, a little sloppy on the on the last one, but it's got a slight slight box press to it. Nice give. Not quite Maduro. It might be Maduro, but could be a dark Corojo wrapper. Hard to tell without lighting it. But see, now I feel bad because I can't smell this cigar either, and I'm sure this smells really good. I'm not getting much on this either. But maybe because we're, we're in a room that it, there's a lot of smoke going on. Yeah, it's an underground bunker. There's an underground a bunker. Ventilation. Right. Although, I will say, it's for four guys in a tiny room, oh, it's yeah. good. It sounds like a sitcom. Four <laughs> guys in a tiny room. Um, all right, so we're going to fire uh, We're going to fire this up. We're going to fire this bad boy up. Ooh. Nice peel I drink. Now this has a great draw. All right. Okay, real spicy on retro, right off the bat. Super spicy on the retro. Still feel it in my nose. Still feel it in my nose. So a bit of it's got a finish, I can tell. Oh, I should have I should have cleansed my palate with some whiskey. There you go. No joke. You, but as you're watching, you should all right now cleanse your palate. Everyone, take a drink. Yes, some whiskey. This is probably the most relaxed show we've ever done. Chill. Yeah, I've got no okay script. I've got no script. Uh, all right, so this, um, is, this is Dojo Unplugged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite literally, we're on Wi-Fi. And... <laughs> oh, so I like this. Um, great drop. I mean, hmm. this the retro hail. It uh, clears my my nose. I mean, it's got a, a bit of a. I'm not, it's not, I'm not going to say white pepper or anything like that, but it's uh, almost like a, uh, you know, a real intense, maybe cinnamony spice that kind of... This, this has got some good uh, get up and go, too. Um, long finish. What do you think of the color of that? I love the color. It's Isn't a really nice color. Really even color. Yeah, deep. Yeah, I wouldn't quite call it a Maduro, but it's it's a dark, either dark Cabana or dark Corojo, maybe. This has sort of like that clay color look. You know, some yeah. cigars sort of look like a clay, a clay finish. That's what this reminds me of, mm. kind of clayish. But it's very good. All right, so hey, mm. while we're smoking, and you can just uh, anytime you want to interrupt and talk about your cigars that you're having, you can. But um, Let's talk a little bit about the show. So we both just got back from the show, big show, and I've talked to some of the other bloggers, but I haven't got a chance really to talk to you about the show and your thoughts in Vegas. So first of all, give me your overall impression of just uh, the show. What did you think of the show? So I loved it. I thought it was a great show. Um, you know, it wasn't as busy as, as some other years, but for me that's a good thing because I got to talk to more people for longer. Um, Brand owners and whatnot, yeah. and representatives, and so for me it was a more intimate experience. And I heard from just about everybody that there weren't as many, there wasn't as much traffic in their booths, but that right. the people that were there were actually buying stuff. So yeah, we heard that a lot. A lot of a lot of guys said that their sales were, you know, at the same as last year at least, or better even. Like uh, La Florida Minicana said, it was their best show ever. So wow, yeah. So um. Let's talk about the uh, – so they changed the venue. I couldn't notice the difference. Once I was in the place – I'll tell you the difference. The hotel was bad. The hotel – you guys got stayed off. We stayed off. You stayed uh, you know, on Fremont Street. You right. guys did it right. Let me tell you right now. The Westgate Hotel, don't ever go there. <laughs> don't ever stay there. If you stay at the convention center, it's, it's so convenient. They suck you in. It's right there. Elvis used to perform that. It probably used to be nice, but I'm guessing Elvis probably stayed in a nicer room, maybe <laughs> up on top. Yeah, you know, yeah, the hotel was was terrible, but the show itself was great. One nice thing that I've mentioned on other shows was with this show, uh, we could just zip out to our car and zip back to the hotel. We could park right in front, mm. which mm -hmm. I liked a lot. So I mean, as far as the convention center it went itself goes, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, it made it easier for me and Jordan to. You know, sometimes we needed to get it, you know, 
change and get rid of some cigars that we were too many cigars or whatever. Yeah, I would have just that would have been nice to have a place to stash yeah. like a suitcase or something. Yeah. So um all right, let's get right into the uh, thick of it. Um as you're covering the show and you guys did how did you cover the show? What did you what was you you do videos? We did a lot more video this year. We did a lot of interviews. I probably probably only got like a quarter of them posted already. Um it's taken me forever to edit and all that, but but yeah, we talked to um we did videos with just about everybody, and the ones we didn't, we got photos and, and are doing a nice write-up on, on almost every booth. So almost every booth. Trying. I mean, even the little the little guys? Even the little guys. Wow. Kudos to you guys, because yeah, it's, we didn't come close to that. We we hit just sort of the uh, ones that we thought, you know, which is not, that's not right, but that's just as, but the best we could do. Just the way it is. It's just the best... Even even with six people, I we still yeah. missed a couple booths that later I was like, oh my god, I can't believe we we didn't stop there. Right, because there's a lot of booths, but um, a lot of booths. So let's talk about even uh, a map booth. Even a map booth. What was even a that, map booth? Did you guys watch that interview? Uh, okay, watch yeah, that interview it. that we posted with Matt Booth at the Caldwell booth. Phenomenal. Uh, he took over the the camera like two minutes in and just did his thing. It was great. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> now this is smoothed out already. So now it's more buttery, yeah. uh, a lot more buttery. The uh, retro hail is that was must have just been the very very start because now I'm not getting that. It's right now it's real nice. This guy is strong, but I'm getting some like it's kind of floral notes back there. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of oak maybe. It's real good. All right, I'm liking it. What do you think was the? Uh, let's talk about. The, the the booze and the cigars. Uh, what was some surprises that sort of took you off guard at the show? Things that maybe you weren't expecting, either. Uh, mainly on the let's start with the on the good side, like uh, stuff that you, maybe a cigar or a booth you thought, wow, this kind of, these guys kind of surprised me, man. Maybe they're uh, maybe they're doing a little more than I thought. There weren't a ton of surprises this year. I mean, everybody sent out press releases beforehand, yeah. so we pretty much knew. Everything that was going to be there. Um, I think the most impressive thing was the Dupont mm. booth. They had, I mean, they're just coming out with some crazy, crazy lighters there. Like there's one that's a revolver that the flame when you click the trigger it actually comes out the barrel. Mm. And they have that that new lighter that's like a it's got three settings. It's a slide. It goes from like a soft flame to a dual flame to a torch. It's right. Like super cool. I like the revolver one, but I don't like the three day waiting period on that one. You know. <laughs> You gotta register it. Yeah, it's that. That it's ruined worth it, it though. That ruined doing. it for me right there. So, um, but so, so cigar wise, now you smoked a zillion cigars like everybody does when they have, go to the show, and it's tough because your palate is shot. Yeah. But are, were there one or two or three that you had there that you said, "Wow, this is this is really good." The one that's the only thing I could think of that I didn't actually smoke till after the show, but. Best one from the show was the Wise Man from mm. uh, from Melillo. The Maduro. That cigar. Yeah. Ooh. The Maduro El Wense Wise Man. Phenomenal. That's going to be on a lot of top lists this year. I'm trying to think of what I smoked at the show. I, I tend to save the stuff that I know right. I'm going to want to smoke on a clean palate. But um, yeah, I can't think of anything that really stood out at the show. Today we posted a review of the Hit and Run. Have yeah, you had I, I smoked that at the show. Yeah, I did like that, but I was it was like my fourth cigar of the yeah. day and I could tell it was it was good. I just didn't I couldn't give it its due justice, but it's I really it good. good. You know what it reminds me a lot of Emmett is the Maestro di Tiempo. Mm. Very similar, that grain crackery sweetness to it. Um, sort of Jordan described it as being in between the Maestro di Tiempo and the Dos Firmas. Okay. Somewhere in between those two cigars. Right. Well, we gave it, what did we give it, Jordan? The 93. We loved it. We absolutely loved that. And here's another cigar I liked. Well, I'll get your comment on this one. Did you try the new Underground Sun Grown? Have not tried it yet. Really good. I meant to try that, but I have not yet. Pumpkin spice, cinnamon. It's a ton of flavor. I think you'll like that one. All right, so give me some other cigars maybe that you had that so I thought were good. I hate to... I hate to crap on a cigar, but the one I tried that I was really excited about but didn't like at the show, and it could totally, disclaimer, it could totally right. be just because it was you don't know, because end of the day or it could have been day. dry or whatever, but the, uh, the New Jersey State Pappy cigar oh, okay. just didn't do it for me at all. I got 
I got no flavors out of it. But you know what? Right after that, I lit up an FSG from the same table, and it was phenomenal. Oh, the so, Florida Sun. Yeah, the Florida Sun runs are really, really good. But so I, I got to do the Florida Sun run again. They might need some rest, whatever, but I was mm -hmm. not impressed with that. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on cigars? Well, I'll, how about this? I'll name some booths. Yeah. And you just sort of, off the top of your head, give me some, you know, one or two sentences Sort of like, you know, rapid fire. It's like a Rorschach test. Yeah, like a right. Rorschach test. All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, the Caldwell booth. Matt booth. Mm, that dude. That dude is hilarious. That dude should have his own reality TV show. Just, <laughs> just like the Kardashians or something. Just follow him around. It'll be hilarious. Yeah, did cool, you see like the sub booth? Yeah, this little arcade. Yeah, right, that yeah. was awesome. Did you see the painting of him? Yeah, it was there's a yeah, there's a picture of that on, on our set. But it's like, that uh, was hilarious. They're both scantily clad. Um, Painted kind of in a lover's embrace. It's really it's tasteful, but that. It was, it was what do you make of uh, of that whole situation? I mean, you know, he leaves the industry. Boom, he's right back in it. Yeah, I was and surprised. Sort of hits hits the ground running, you know, with a yeah, really I mean, good the release. Way, well, uh, the press about that made it sound like he was retiring, but mm -hmm. makes you wonder if if maybe he it wasn't so much his choice. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, I don't know either, but he definitely came back quicker than I thought he was going to mm -hmm. come back. And yeah, I uh, thought maybe he would wait out the FDA or whatever, but he went right in. Didn't wait it out. Okay. Um, the Drew Estate booth was different this year. Was what, different. what were your thoughts on the Drew Estate booth? The, I missed the bridge. The bridge was cool. The bridge was cool. Um, Although I'll say this. That, that big water tower. The bridge did make it – they filled up a lot of space. There's a lot of room. Yeah. Yep. And it kind of made it hard to get around, whereas now – they had just the smaller you know, thing. But I like the way they were they were really organized this year. They took you around, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom, they boom, did boom. it kind of like uh, how General does it, where they have their own stations Yeah, and guys talking. The thing about that booth I was most impressed with was we got to try uh, the Drew brand's uh, the, the liquors. Now, those were, were tasty. Very tasty. There was that. What was the one that was a blend of, uh, the blend so of whiskey the and the rum? And you got the uh, Brixton Mash. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. What you're talking yeah, about? it's like half – Half rum, half whiskey, or mm -hmm. bourbon. It really good, really good. Yeah. The only problem is the distribution is pretty limited at the moment. I think they're coming to Colorado uh, sometime next year, but I think Q4 you'll be able to find it in bigger cities. What did you? How did you like the uh, new sort of rebranded Hoya de Nicaragua uh, Antonio line? I like the look of the new one. Yeah, me too. I do. I, I, I like, like it a lot better. I like how everything is uh, kind of cohesive now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, me too. Yeah, I do like the look of that. And I'm excited. I haven't tried yet the, the Grand Reserva Antonio. That's That was one of the ones I'm, I'm most excited about to try, but I haven't got to it yet. All right, so uh, one of the booths that had a, a real makeover mm -hmm. and seemed to be different to me, and I'll get your thoughts on it, was General Cigar booth. Mm -hmm. Dramatically, seems like a whole new company almost. They were, they're so different. Yeah, they were kind of minimalistic this year. They mm -hmm. uh they didn't do anything real crazy, but they all had their individual, very distinct sections of brands. And CAO had their own little section with a platform, and Rick Rodriguez doing his thing. And yeah, it was cool. They have they have quite a bit of new things coming out. I what mean, do you think of the uh, Amazon Basin Puma de Corda? I haven't Corda, tried. I haven't tried the new one, but the, the original Amazon Basin is, is really good. So the the Anaconda is a lot like the original. It's supposed to be like a mix between the two. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Um, but that company with uh, Regis at the helm seems to be a lot more focused. It is, yeah. And their their marketing is on point. Much the better the last couple of years. I looked at, hey, I looked at the cigars I got from the IPCPR the year before. And then I looked at, because I, I put all my general cigars together so that they're generally. organized. Organized? Yeah. Just generally. And I was struck by the year before, so many of them, and I don't, I'm, this isn't a cut down. I mean, it kind of is, but. The year before, the the cigars just looked the appearance of them just looked cheesy in my opinion. Yeah, you know the some of the Partagas stuff and some it just looked cheesy. It didn't. It looked like ch sort of cheapy catalog kind of stuff. But this year, totally be much better. Yeah. Like in one year, everything seemed a hundred percent better in my opinion. I agree. I think last year was a transition year for them. They kind of sort of turned things around towards the more premium. I don't, know, I don't want to say premium, but more boutique. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. So they're actually doing – they're collaborating with A.J. Fernandez and 
and they brought back Jack Terrano, which was a great move. And yeah, they're they're doing things right now. All right, what about the Espinosa booth or the you know their products? I really like. A lot of people think that the uh, the dread is a kind of kind of gimmicky, but I like it. I like it. It's cool. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's like mm -hmm. it's got a, it's like the firecracker where it's got a long um, a long not a pigtail, but a. It's got four of them, so it kind of looks like a dreadlock. It's really cool. I haven't smoked it, but right, it's cool. And got I had the reggae. I didn't have the yeah. dread, so it was good. And then, um, all right, so what about the uh, Tatuaje? What do, you, what do you make of them? And I'm not just talking That's, about the booth. Just give me your feeling of the brand. It's pretty much same old, same old for them. They haven't, yeah. really, they haven't really changed much recently. Uh, it was cool that Pete was pouring uh, his wine there. Got to try a little mm -hmm. bit of that. That was nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they... They did their new releases this year, kind of months before. There wasn't really anything new at the show besides the, uh, what is it, the new monster? Uh, what's the name? The uh, Mike. Mike, Myers. Mike, Mike Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All right. What about the? This was at the booth that you mentioned a little bit earlier, but the Davidoff compounds. Yep. That's always great because the carpet's so soft. It is. <laughs> it's, you know. You guys that haven't been to the show, you don't know how hard that show is on your feet, and when you get a booth that has money. And they put like a nice padded carpet under there. It is looks like a cloud for your feet. I think they probably do the best of any company at having one booth, but differentiating the brands in the booth. Yeah, I mean, you got the Camacho area looks different than the Davidoff area. Looks different than the Avo area. Yeah, I have it's to say, super I, cool. I shed a tear at the they had Avo's piano there with his yeah. hat sitting on it. That was yeah. really sad, but yeah. you know, but a cool tribute. That's like walking into an Apple store, you know, it's so cool. It was cool. An Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. You want to get into the Apple Android argument cool. right now? <laughs> let's, do, let's do it on air. You guys no. have to keep blind reviews and Apple. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so what about uh, Romacraft? I didn't go to the Romacraft booth myself. I, mm -hmm. That was one that uh, my team members got. Okay. We, haven't, uh, we haven't written that up yet, but we did go to Skip's party. That was a lot of fun. Okay. What about Warped? Warped, um, that was pretty much the same booth as last year. A couple new products. Uh, I always love talking to Kyle. He's, yeah. he's a great one to talk to. He, he has such a passion for, for what he does. And and I wanted to do a video interview with Max uh, Fernandez, but he's camera shy, so he wouldn't do it. But, <laughs> but if you ever get to talk to that guy, he's very soft-spoken, but he's the nicest guy. All right, so uh, if, 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 if there was, you know, a cigar business stock market... Give me a couple of stocks that are going up that I should invest in. Yeah, companies that are going up that I need to invest in right now. But what Davidoff, I agree, but I mean there are their stocks are already probably expensive. It is. Do you have any do you have any ones like bargain See, based any ones up and comers that I could like dump a bunch of money into if there were stocks, which they're not. But if there were, that you say you say, Wow, these guys are these guys are going on the way. I would say protocol is huh? they're they're killing it every year just I mean, they're still, a, I would consider a small company. I mean, everything's made at LaZona, and they have a, a good relationship with Eric. But, but yeah, Juan Cancel is, he's all over social media, and I respect the hell out of that. He's hes doing it right, and their cigars are, are fantastic. Have you tried the new, uh, where is it? The Themis. Yeah, the Themis. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, they don't even like Connecticut that much, and they blend the great one, I think. Yeah. Well, with the help of Hector. Yeah. And, you know, Hector's always good at that. All right, uh, any other ones? <laughs> Jordan keeps saying Placentia. Uh, that was they, they just because they actually had a booth this year. It was the first yeah. time. That, but don't you think that they did a good job? Don't you think that that gives you a whole new perspective of that brand? Because I mean, yeah. the, the cigar that they did. Because yeah, they've it, always kind of been behind the scenes right, right. kind of people. They never really marketed their own products. But yeah, they're they're going in with uh, with their feet first, and they're doing a good job. Any other ones come to mind? I think Romacraft would be a solid bet. I mean, I don't know if you could sit them a small company anymore, but but they're. I mean, they have, yeah. to, they have to turn away new clients just because they can't keep up with production. And you know what's really brilliant about those guys is they know their. They have a vision, and they just yep. stick with it. They're not all over the place. A lot of these companies, and I won't mention any names, but a lot of these companies. You know, they uh, something gets popular, and they're trying to jump on this bandwagon, jump on that bandwagon. Skip and Michael, they just they have a vision, and they stick with it. Yep. And their branding is is uniform, 
and it makes sense and it's cool. It's hip. And they know where they're going. I'll give you another one. Uh, Mombacho. Okay. Yeah. They uh, they really made a name for themselves. And I don't know if you've been to their factory. And they're the no. only cigar factory in Granada, but it is beautiful. It is the most beautiful factory. It's Robbie's it's, been telling me for like six months that he's going to send me some stuff to review. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ever he, since he ever never since, does. So Robbie, you're watching <laughs> the show. Do it, man. You know, hey, uh, Robbie's done great with their with their advertising. He took over their marketing. He's done a great job, and uh, yeah. their their new stuff coming out is. Well, phenomenal. Robbie's a good guy, other than the fact that he must keep losing my address. <laughs> other than that, yeah, that Cosecha is going to be something special. What did you think of um, Southern Draw? I, I yeah, I liked what he's got Robert's some new doing. stuff coming out too. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, the, the Jacob's Ladder was really good. really good. Really um, good. I smoked the. Uh, Rose of Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Yeah, we just reviewed that actually. I, Robert's actually watching it How'd on, on Facebook. It did well. Um, I think it got a ninety-one, maybe a ninety. Mm. But I think it, it kind of worked out that the the guys that it got sent to it's always random, but the guys that it got sent to just happened to not be you know mild Connecticut smokers, but they still liked it. Right. They just said it wasn't you know their cup of tea, but they appreciated that it was very good. I I like Connecticut's and I I love Rose of Sharon. I smoked two of those at the show just because I like it so much. Are there any cigar company brands in the cigar stock market that I should be wary of? Maybe hold my stock mm -hmm. or possibly even sell Ooh. because you're worried that they they could be going down. Do you, is there anything strikey like that or do you even want to say? I can't think of any that I'm really worried about. I mean, there's always, there's with the FDA, there's going to be more acquisitions in the next year, I'm sure. But uh, I think that that's kind of on an uptick. There's there's good things happening, so I think uh, I think that might be on the upswing in terms of people getting scared out of the market. But it's good because the people that are staying with it are the ones that are really committed. So yeah. So you're saying that maybe uh, there's some sifting, some filtering. Yeah, just uh, going on. Weeding out the yeah the, the ones that, that had their toes in the water. Were there were there any boozy you went to that you're disappointed that they just didn't give you the time of day and didn't. Um, you know, really pay much attention to you. Uh, not that I can think of. Um, you know, I went into the Fuente booth. I went into the Fuente booth. They, yeah. And there was not a single customer in that booth. There was 30 people working there. 30 people working there. And not a <laughs> single customer. And they wouldn't, eat, they, didn't, they didn't even say hi to me. They, I mean, and, and hey, I'm just a dude. I'm not. I'm not saying that they should have said hi to me because I'm a dojo guy. I'm saying they could have just said hi to me as a human being, <laughs> yeah, as a person, another fellow human on the planet. I have to say, hi. you're right. That that is the one booth that I've never like actually had a conversation with anybody that that works. That's probably the only company that that is true for. There are signs all over the whole booth. No free samples. Yeah. No free samples. Well, guess what? I don't want your samples. I just want to say yeah. hi. I just want to say hi. Yeah. Let's see what's going on, what's yeah. new, you know? That yeah, was I mean, kind of crazy, though, right? The yeah. Fuente booth. Not a single no person in there. Their booth has been exactly the same for at least yeah. the four years that I've seen it. Maybe it was a five. I don't know how many years I've gone. But, yeah, it hasn't changed. They didn't have any new products that I saw. I went into the Padron booth, and the guy talked to me and Jordan for 15 yeah, straight minutes. Yeah, Padron was actually pretty cool this year. They, they, they were super friendly. They didn't have much to offer. But no, they yeah. don't have much new coming they, out. They have a square two boat. Yeah, essentially the thing. And they, they have, have that book they're really excited about. It's like a history of uh -huh, that, that's cool. really cool. That's just cool. I would, I would buy that. But they they were very very friendly. Yeah. They, and here they are. I think Padron Fuente kind of on the same. Levels. Yeah, I mean they're one of those, they're those companies that don't have to do anything and they'll just yeah. keep keep doing the same business they always do. So what do you what do you, look at that ash you got going? It's a pretty decent ash. Yeah, yeah. I'm what enjoying you, I'm enjoying it. It's yeah, a yeah. full body cigar for sure. Full a lot, body, a lot of flavor. A lot going on there. What would you say the flavors are? I'm getting more oak now that, that we're further into it. Definitely like that kind of charred oak, uh, like you stick your head in a, in a whiskey barrel kind of thing. I'm getting, um, this is, uh, I want to say, it's really good. It's one note, but it's a really good note. Mm. It's one note right now, but it's really good. It's sort of buttery. Um, just um, there's some oak. There's some cedary kind of flavors going on. And uh, great burn, great draw. Very solid. I would do, I would smoke it again. Yeah, I've had to touch touch mine up a little bit, but the ash is solid. It's it's not going anywhere. So uh, let's get on to uh, the what you guys do and your website. What's 
What have you recently reviewed on BlindMansPuff.com recently? So let's see. Recently, uh, like you said, we did the Rosa Sharon. Um, we did the Davidoff Chefs edition pretty recently. Oh, what did you think of that? How'd that um, come out? That came out like a 91, I think. 91. Um, not, as, not as high a score as I was expecting, but it's uh, Davidoff. We've never had a Davidoff score less than a 90, so. What was the, what's the highest, can you think of the highest rated cigar you guys have ever done? Highest rated we've ever done was a 96, and that was the Warp Futuro. Wow. The Warp Futuro? That was uh, the highest score. That's a shocker. I mean, don't not. It's not a shocker that, not that I dislike that cigar or anything, but I'm just surprised because, you know, there's a lot. I, there's some other warped ones that I. But you know, that's the thing about blind reviews, right? Yeah, and the way we do our that that thing that got our cigar of the year that year too it was either one or two, and the way we do our voting for that is, you know, everyone that's on the panel, it's over 20 people gets 10 votes. So okay. you're not going to necessarily get the ones that were rated highest on the site sure. because they may be thirty dollars scars and not everybody's tried it. But the we way do we, the same thing, yeah. Yeah, the way we do the votes, it's 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 more of a general consensus than just than just compiling the reviews for the year. Right. So you get that'd be boring if you just did yeah. your top reviews. Right. So yeah, that's uh, that one came out really well. It reviewed blind the best we've ever given it. That was wow. was either a lot. I think it was two years ago. That was the. What are some other What are some other ones that were uh, real high on your guys' lists? So this week we posted Reviews. the review for the. We finally got around reviewing the the Oscar Habano, not the Leaf okay. by Oscar, but the Oscar. And that got a ninety three, which is real good. Wow, ninety three. That is real good. And they just came out with the Oscar Maduro this year, which we're excited about too. Mm. So that's going to be coming in the pipeline soon. What are Are there any that got a real high review that was surprising to you like after you you know like compiled your from your reviewers and you looked at the review and said wow this is a 92 or 93 I did not think it was gonna get in the 90s or whatever was there any surprises like I that? think the biggest discrepancy we've ever had was the uh, the Alec Bradley Occidental Reserve mm. that one's been around forever I think it was Alec Bradley's first cigar it's made at the, the Davidoff factory and you can get a bundle of them for like 50 bucks and it scored like a 93 and it's a two dollar cigar wow yeah that was i was real shocked about that one mm. all right let's go on the low end uh what's one of the what are some of the lowest <laughs> or if you can think of the lowest so the one rated. the the cuban peso you smoked earlier was ah. one, of the, one of the lower ones just because it looks like a dog yeah. turd and <laughs> it's not necessarily i mean you get a good one it it's a really it's a good smoke but there right. are Unsmokable ones in that bundle too, so it was kind of a okay. kind of a crap. And you said so that got a what? I think it was 86, 87. Okay. I think the lowest cigar we ever scored was an 84, and that was a. Uh, let's say it was the punch. It was the super fat one they sent us? It was like a 64 yeah. ring gauge or oh, something. Yeah. It was not good. Hmm. Now, on that same note, what are some of the what are one or two that you thought? Wow, this got. A much lower rating than I expected it to get. So just this week we did the we posted the Avo uh, Synchro Ripno, the South America yeah. one. I I smoked that from the box that that we reviewed. Uh, and I loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. But it only got an 89 on the site, which isn't bad. It's still a good score. But I was expecting that to be. I love that cigar. a lot higher. Yeah, I love that cigar. Any other ones that got lower than you imagined they were gonna get? The um, did you guys ever review the? Uh, Padron anniversary that was exclusive to Famous, the F75. No, but we recently did the uh, 90th and did not give that a yeah. super so, high, high So, review. yeah, the, the one time we reviewed a Padron anniversary, which I thought would have been like a 95, it got uh, like 88. Yeah. Or an 89. It's weird. You know what? It's to me, and I'm just throwing this out there, but I, I love the Thousand series, right? Especially for the price, the drone thousand series, three thousand, all that, and I love the sixty four, and I love the twenty six, but other than those, I'm not super jazzed about some of the special like family reserve stuff. I mean, they're not terrible, obviously, they're decent cigars. Well, the thing about them, like you take the band off, it doesn't look that good. I mean, they're only a single cap. I don't know if you've ever taken a close look at those, but they're the lead. It's it's kind of lumpy sometimes, even the anniversaries. You take the band off and you don't know it's a drone. You, you're kind of like, man, what is this? Um, 
Yeah, that's that's been my experience as well. Now, I really liked the new Fuente. Was it the twentieth? Yeah, I really that, liked that. That was really good. Now, I've, uh, some people have smoked it and not been impressed. People smoked that when it first came out, and it wasn't great, just because I think they needed more rest. If if you wait till like now and you smoke one of those after they've been out for was it January December they came out six yeah. months whatever months later now they're they're like upper nineties I would give it but when it first came out I was it was not as good as a regular Opus I thought so what are you thinking on your cigar I'm really enjoying it do I'm, we I'm digging it should we is this the point of the show you try to guess like more generic things like it's country okay or something. what uh, what country would you say that that emanates from? Given the strength in the wrapper, I'm gonna guess Nicaragua. Um, okay. Maybe Honduras. Okay. Hard to say. I say there's a there's a ton going on here, so it's kind of hard for me to. So you'd say it's pretty complex. Pinda, it's definitely complex. Um, is it is it a heavy cigar? Is it weighty? It's a good, It's got a good weight. Yeah. Good weight. I would call it a above average weight for its size. Okay. <laughs> we, at this point, what would you rate it at? At this point, I, I'd give it a maybe 92. Mm, 92. Yeah, that's pretty good. What, um, what are you thinking? What country? Uh, I'm going to say this also is Nicaragua. I'm going to say it's Nicaraguan. Strength? Uh, medium. Medium. Uh, medium. Medium full. But not much more than that. My ash is still going strong. I know, man. You're killing it. Um, and I would say if I was going to rate this just right now, I would say 89. Okay. 89. So mm -hmm. I'm enjoying it, um, but I'm going to give it an 89 at this point. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, – it has had some transitions. Like I said early on, it had a, whew, a real spice kick to it, and then now it's mellowed out, and it's sort of uh, – it's a very nice flavor, perfect draw, got a perfect burn. So the construction uh, on my end would get maybe a 92. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. I could go maybe 90. It's 89, 90-ish. It's interesting. The the kind of soft box press this had at first has kind of expanded into it. Now it's almost perfectly round. Yeah, right? It's interesting. They do it's tend very, to lose that. Very soft a bit. box press. Um, what would you... Expect that cigar to cost. I'd pay 10, 11 bucks. Okay. I'd say this would be uh, eight or nine. Okay. Eight or nine. And I'd be happy. If I spent eight or nine, I'd be happy with it. Um, definitely would, uh, you know, it's in Colorado, it's so hard because the cigars often don't burn great True. in the high altitudes. But this. It's perfect, so that, that gets points for me right there. Yeah, just keeping it going. That's another cool thing at the show that yeah, Sidecar came with, out with that um, high altitude. I guess they changed the name now to high performance, but it was originally designed for butane. high altitude butane. Yeah, I need to get some. I know they're supposed to be sending us some, but okay. we, we haven't got it yet. No. Yeah, you got the you got the Sidecar hookup. Sidecar, I love you, Sidecar. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you might have the Sidecar hookup, but today I got the sweetest Camacho box in the mail. I saw that. Jeez. We didn't get that yet. That was, I don't know if ours is lost in the mail. It was, it was amazing. Camacho, Camacho crate. crate. Or where's, where's this is blind man's puff crate. It was yeah. incredible. Man. Yes. I'll, I'll take some more whiskey. Tell them to go to Instagram and check out All right. So do we got questions coming in? It's time for questions. For some, Feel free right. to write questions on Facebook, too. I've seen a lot of people join, right. but no questions yet. So let's get some questions for uh, Emmett here. And uh, I'll uh, search him myself. I'm glad you guys are joining us. It's sort of an impromptu, not an impromptu show, that's the wrong word. It's just uh, being out, out of the dojo headquarters is different. Is this a first outside? No, no, we've done it a few times. We've done it a few times. you ever done it out of country? Are you going to try and do that? Have we ever done it? I don't, I don't, think, think, so. I don't think so. All right. Um, oh, okay. Uh, this one comes from, uh, this first question comes from uh, Big D Stokey. And uh, Big D Stogie asks, which three cigars do you think will be on the top of the list for 2007 New Blends? 2017. 17. 2007, <laughs> let's see, pre-predicate. Uh, ah, how about that one? 
Yeah. What am I? What is a cigar aficionado all of a sudden? <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah. Buzz. Yeah. Is that for you or me? This, or, both, or both? For you. It's for me. It's for you. So, top cigars of this year. Absolutely the the wise man Maduro. Elder wise man Wednesday Maduro for me. Um, Very cigar. Me personally, I, I think the the Avo Ritmo is is phenomenal. I, me too. That's going to be in my top ten, I think. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? Uh, what else have I tried? Oh, uh, the new um, the AJ Fernandez uh, Enclave Broadleaf. Oh, I haven't tried that. Yet. That is a good broadleaf cigar. I have not tried. That's that like yet. one of the most broadleaf cigars you will taste. Just pure flavor, flavor country. It's good stuff. What about um? Did you try Steve Saka's new cigar? I did, but uh, it was my, let's see, I tried it at the show, so it was kind of, it was very strong. Was it? It's the, um, what does it call it, the Total Slash Diaz. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Tons of tons of flavor and tons of strength, and not definitely not for everyone. But um, actually, you know what, the, the exclusive one might make my top ten, too. I know you guys weren't as crazy yeah. about that, but but I really like that one. I, I do a little bit. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, right. we don't really do the limit, but we do have a best limited cigar. There you go. So we'll, we have just one. Uh, I'd say uh, just off the top of my head, I'd say the Hit and Run, Room yeah. One and One. I like the Sun Grown by uh, Drew State was amazing. Had another one of those last night, and man, it's got a ton of flavor. The Ritmo was great. Um, the I had another one, um, Jordan. Yeah, that wise man was great. That we had, that Nick gave us was fantastic. Yeah. So those are just off the top of my head. Yeah. Without thinking about it. All right. Good question there, Big D Stogie. This one comes from Kevin A. Uh, so with the blind taste test, is there a particular spirit that would pretty much pair with basically anything? It seems like it would be tough to pair when you don't know what to expect flavor wise. That's a good question. Yeah. Most of our guys, when we're actually doing blind reviews, don't don't pair anything with water. Um, just because we don't want it to influence the the flavor, the score, or anything. But um, for me personally, I drink a little bit of everything. It just kind of depends on if I'm pairing it with something. I usually know what I'm expecting. So if it's a really bold cigar, I'll go with um, like a Scotch, something like that. Uh, if it's like a Connecticut cigar, I might go with a, a light body coffee. It's in mm -hmm. the morning. Um, I don't know if there's anything that I think it's a real personal choice what you pair it with. Uh, if there's one thing that you could probably pair. With any cigar, it's probably Cuban rum. You're yeah. like Havana Club, uh, seven years, pretty solid choice no matter what you're smoking. Do you recommend to your reviewers that they drink club soda or anything so that it's so that there's a uniformity uh, amongst the guys or no? I do actually. I I um, have started drinking uh, sparkling mineral water just because that's it's a really good palate cleanser. It sounds pretentious, but it's like, <laughs> like the the carbonation. Especially if I'm smoking more than one cigar in a night, I'll, I'll drink a lot of, uh, of Perrier or something just to cleanse the palate so the previous cigar doesn't influence the next one. But yeah, I, I think sparkling, sparkling water is a good choice. Uh, or just, just regular water. When we were at Jose Blanco's tasting seminar or blending seminar the other day, um, he has everybody drink club soda in between. Yeah. And uh, that was... That was good. I've done that before, but it was fun doing it with Jose because obviously, I mean, he knows what he's he knows what he's doing. Oh, it was gonna happen. Finally, ash myself. I, but I, look I, at how was, deep into that. That was a good. That. that was almost two inches in. Yeah, and I would say that my cigar is uh, picking up. The flavor now is more intense. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, more spicy. So uh, started off spicy, kind of got mellow. Now it's picking up again. It's kind of fun because I might up my rating just on that right now to 90 because I have had these transitions. And so uh, it's funny. Mine's kind of going the other way. It's still really not not like uh, taste-wise, but the strength is going down a little mm -hmm. bit as we get further in. Now. Kind of actually opening up the flavors a little bit, kind of getting more, not as much of that charred oak anymore. Um, kind of some leather now. A little, bit of, mm -hmm. a little bit of coffee, maybe? It, it's, there's a lot going on. Hey, Emmett, I got a question. Like, people sometimes mock, uh, they mock reviewers because they describe cigars with, you know, unique flavors. Toasted right? marshmallow. Best. Right. Yeah. Stuff like that. 
Um, I defend bloggers because when you do this for four or five years, you don't want to review every cigar and say, tastes like oak, tastes like leather, tastes like, yeah. you know what I mean? Tell, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on On its base level, every cigar pretty much tastes like a cigar, sure. Hold on. Um, yeah. Go on. We're going off camera here. Yeah. Something's happening. I got to uh, repair. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think as you smoke more, and especially if you're reviewing it, you're paying a lot more attention to the flavors. Sorry about that. I had to take a leak. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so you you got to come up with interesting stuff. You do. You don't want every cigar review to read the same. So you gotta you got to try and be... Even if even if it does sound silly sometimes, you gotta try and pick out some some different flavors just to keep it interesting. And, and when you're first starting out reviewing, it's it is really hard. But um, if you're trying to do that and pick out flavors, I recommend looking at like a flavor wheel. Um, Cigar Inspector's got a really good one. Mm -hmm. I just keep it up on the screen sometimes. It has it broken down by like floral and then expands out to like different categories of floral and different kinds of wood and it's really it's useful. The dojo has a really sick ratings calculator. There you go. It's a, it's a uh, spreadsheet that you can get from us and you can you can describe it first there and then at the end it automatically makes a flavor wheel for you. Ooh, it's pretty okay. cool. That's pretty cool. cool. So check that out. But uh but yeah so so like you know all cigars might have a chocolate. All cigars might have a spice. All cigars might have oak and cedar and leather, so you gotta you got to try to go for. I remember one time we were smoking the uh, Oliva Melania, right? Mm, I love that cigar. And uh, Dominic, who's not here tonight, uh, we were all smoking, and we we're trying to do the review. And Dominic said, "This cigar tastes a little bit like tomato soup." Mm -hmm. And yeah. then all of a sudden, all of us said, "Dang!" You yelled it. There, there's yeah, once something to that. that. You'll just hit a flavor, and it's like, yes, absolutely. That <laughs> tastes like something yeah. from my childhood or right. tomato soup. Yeah. So while we get mocked for that, us uh, reviewers, there there is good reason for that. Hey, real quick, one more question before we decide what these are. Um, what do you make of – Steve Saka made a post today on Facebook about the uh, this whole coffee craze. Yeah. Every, you know, cigar company doing coffee and – Steve was, I think he was, he wasn't mocking it or bashing it in any way, but he was kind of like, hey, is this something that I should do? You know, this whole uh, making coffee thing. What's your thought on the recent, you know, everybody has a coffee. I can't speak to how well they sell, but for me, it's it's kind of kind of gimmicky. Um, I mean, there are, there are coffees that I'm sure you could pair well with a certain cigar, but I mean... For Steve, I recommend don't don't make coffee, Steve. Just keep <laughs> keep your focus on what you do, yeah. which is what you do better than almost anyone makes cigars. But uh, not for some people, I'm sure it works. I mean, yeah, it's, a coffee is a is a great option if it if it sells for you, go for it. I'm, I have no problem. There, I said because pretty soon there's going to be a coffee for everything. Yeah, I'm looking to I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own line of coffee, and I want it to pair well with my other coffee. You know, like morning yeah. coffee. Yeah. This will be coffee, coffee. Pair with coffee. Pair with coffee. It'll just be you a better coffee. coffee to pair with, like, whiskey, too. Yeah. You can pair with whatever you want. No, I, I think, uh, you know, hey, it's it's a fun thing that they're doing. And, and um, But let, let's face it, you know, you get too many more of these, and it's going to be. It is a fad. It's just kind of this year's thing. But it's, it's cool. I got no I got no issue with it. Yeah. If people dig it, that's important to me. If they like it. Then that's good. They like it, and so I appreciate that. It so, seems like every year at the show, there's some kind of thing, thing that everyone yeah. has. Like one year, it was every single company had a San Andreas wrapper. Or every uh, company had a Connecticut. Every company had a Connecticut wrapper the year before. Yeah, it's it's always something right. that everyone's trying to do. I think that's just what is this year. It's not good or bad. It's just a thing. Yeah, I haven't uh, tried any of those, but I'm sure that they're good. So um, kudos to you, cats. Um, all right, so. Let's get into this. We're at the end of the show. We're going to announce the winners here in a second of our big contest. But here's our blind reviews. I got a little bit of a wavy burn now. A little bit of a wavy burn, but nothing big. It's not affecting the cigar in any way. Uh, right now, the flavor of this is the best it's been. So I'm liking it right now. Any guesses? 
It's hard. Right. It's hard to be on the spot. I'm going to say this is an Espinosa. Okay. I'll say this is an Espinosa, and um, although the color's not right, I I would almost guess it could be a Laranja, but uh, I'm not sure. Um, I would give it a 90, a solid 90. Okay. And it might it might be some type of Espinosa. It tastes like that. I, I'm a big Espinosa fan. I like the spice. All right, let's re let's reveal it. Ready? All right, so let's reveal what did Master Sent? How badly? So you are smoking. Did Master Sente screw up? Hey Fuente. Oh wow. <laughs> Casa Cuba. Ah. Oh, no. Divine inspiration. So it's not the regular Casa Cuba. Wow. Right? This is the one that is super hard to find. That only came out limited release. I personally think this was phenomenal, but uh, yeah. I would say, and, and so here's, wow, it's beautiful. Here's what it looks like uh, with the fans on it. It's definitely a different blend than the original Casa Cuba, which I wasn't super crazy about, but this one is something special. I'd say the Lorange is better than this. <laughs> uh, but this is really good, and I love the Casa Cuba line. I love it. So, so yeah, thank you. Really thank you for this. And, uh, and you know what? does not taste at all, to me, blind like a Fuente. There you go. It doesn't. Blind is tricky. So here we go, folks. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna admit right now. I do not have Jordan's palette. Jordan has the master, the golden palette. In fact, we keep Jordan's palette on in a, a glass lock, box, lock and keep. locked up on the shelf. We don't want to lose it because it's the golden palette, yeah. and uh, he's the king there. I'm just, I'm just a dude who likes cigars, but. Uh, uh, that's surprising. It does not taste to me. It tastes Nicaraguan to me. All right. All right. So, what do you think? What would you rate it, and what do you think it is? So, I'm gonna give it a 92. Okay. I my original guess was Nicaraguan, but as it as it's getting more mellow, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Honduras. I'm gonna go Honduras, and I'm thinking maybe it's a Camacho. Okay. Maybe one of the the Ecuador, maybe the Ecuador line, because the wrapper just the way it looks. I think it's a little too dark to be a Corojo. What do you think of that sweet band, though? It's a great band. <laughs> this is a limited edition, guys. Yeah. One of a kind. All, All right. right, so how far off am I? All right, so let me show you what it is. Let me get, I'm going to get out the, uh, the actual band for you. And it is the... Uh, the Placencia? Placencia. Right. The, the, the new one. You know what? I the smoked one of these in Nicaragua. So that's what that is. I did not recognize. So that that is tough, that's, right? That is tough. It's it's tricky. Um, blind reviewing totally changes your perspective, and uh, so that's why your guys' review blog is so important to the <laughs> industry because it does give people a new, a different way. So Do you remember what the rapper is on this guy? Uh, Jordan. So yeah. dark curl, yeah. So, so I was better on my first guess than my second. But yeah. The prices are that's about twenty four. Use about. Yeah. So price wise, oh, no, no, not fourteen. Sure. Price wise, these are close to twenty bucks, right? Those are yeah. 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 Those uh, so those ones you were smoking, I think, are eighteen maybe. 19. Okay. Yeah. And it did go out on me just now too. Boo. So boo on that. But hey, you know what's crazy? The cost this Casa Cuba is. Um, just looking at it without the band looks a lot rougher than I would have thought. It's surprising the, the expensive cigars they don't look pretty rough. So so there we go. Me and Emmett failed miserably. Yep. No, we, failed, there, we failed together though. There was no That's the important there was part. no right and wrong. <laughs> but that is the interesting thing, right? Like like I wouldn't want all cigar blogs to review blind. But I wouldn't want all cigar blogs not to re I, I like that we get your guys' perspective. Because it does, it is different, and yeah. it does give you this sort of other. That's why I always like to see. Okay, what did the what did blind man's puff give this cigar? What did this other you know blogger give it? Because one was blind and one wasn't, and that that is interesting. And now I can really see why because I would not have guessed. Yeah, it's this. tough. Although I will say, the night that we had Nick Malilo on the show. Not he nailed it. That guy's palate. He not only did he nail the, on. he nailed the exact cigar that I gave him, and it was blind, which was really amazing. The guy is he's got a killer killer palate. So we did we did better on our our cheap yeah cigars <laughs> than we did on the, on the really good <laughs> yeah. ones. 
We did. We, we nailed the first one. That's what, that that is to, interesting. It was supposed to be a joke. Could that be that, you know, it was this is our second cigar and we're in I'm going to blame it that this is our, not our first cigar of the day. It's not a clean palate. Yeah. That's what I'm going to That's a good excuse. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, let's announce the winner. So, if you're watching the show to see if you won, uh, earlier today, and I'll just go over this real quickly because it's boring, but sometimes people ask, how do you do a random, how do you do a random pick that's honest on the dojo, all the entries? We had hundreds of entries on the dojo and then some on social media. So like I said, uh, we basically give every person that enters kind of like a ticket, and that ticket goes into a spreadsheet, and then those spreadsheet has numbers on the left hand side, and so and then we give extra tickets to people that posted it on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, they basically get another ticket, another entry in the spreadsheet. So just imagine a spreadsheet with a bunch of names, right? Maybe it has 340 names, which is pretty close to what this had. And uh, then we just go to uh, random.org. We put in our uh, 1 to 340. We hit pick, and it says 34. And then we hit pick, and it says 68 or 168. And then we just scroll down. Find those people, boom, those are the winners. So that's how it works. Math is fun. Math is fun. So if you're <laughs> if you're the people that complain that we, that it can't be done, anything can be done, right, Emmett? There's Absolutely. Such a, there's such a thing called Excel <laughs> and it works really good. Spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. <laughs> All right, so let's go and pick or display the winners. So congratulations, each of you gets a custom painting by Subculture Studios, Jesse Flores in the gang. And you also get a little mini Three pack of velvet rats. So there's two winners. Each get the same thing, other than, other than the fact that the painting's different, because you can't. That's a good price. Just like that is a good price. Velvet rats are probably the best jurisdiction. Probably right. the best. And not only that, think about having a cool custom painting framed on your wall. Anything Jesse does is and, yeah, amazing. All right. So here we go. So the first winner. Sorry, Facebook. You can't see this. You can listen. The first winner. <laughs> yeah, we'll start the screen share here. Is BB. BB. BB, you were picked, and he said, uh, That's me. I love America, NASCAR, mm -hmm. bourbon, the Bengals, big bass, big bass. Bass, bass. bass. Big bass. He's a fisherman. And of course, he could play a bass. He's got a really large bass. And look at that. He's, he's drinking some Weller. He's at Texas Motor Speedway. I see him with uh, Kyle, Willie. And uh, he's got it's like friends. Rocky yeah. down there, and he's got the, the bass fish. So congratulations, BB. You're a winner. The other winner was Ninja Nomi. Ninja, you won. He says, that's me, a.k.a. Jeff, 30-year pick of the difference. There he was when those he was. Those glasses are phenomenal. 30 yeah, man. He looks like uh, I need those. He looks he looks like. He's got like the mullet going on, too. Maybe a, like a CIA agent from 1982. <laughs> The hair from the back eventually ended up in the front. In the front, yeah. It was party in the in the back, or yeah. business in front, party in back. Now it's just party, party in the front. front. Yeah. <laughs> no business in the back at all. Yeah. So congratulations, Ninja. You won. Uh, that's the winners. And uh, hey, guys, I want to thank everybody. By the way, tonight, you know, we're just getting started on the dojo. As yeah. always, Friday night, uh, Herf. So we'll lead in, have some fun, do some now playing. I want to thank Emmett for A, being on the show, uh, but B, inviting us into his underground lair, which he told us that when we leave, he has to, we have to make sure that we don't tell anybody what it looked like. We came in blindfolded. Where I mean, was the, blind, the whole blind thing? You everything, yeah. You can't know where you are. So we don't, other than the fact we're here right now, I can't tell you where this is, even on the globe. I couldn't even give you like a rough. He flew us in yep. with a, in a, on a Blackbird jet. Yep, was, that's our private jet. Yeah, that's right here. So, uh, so hey, next week we'll be back. I think we are revamping our show. Um, we're working on doing a whole new format for the live show. So I'm not sure if we'll be back next week or not. We'll let you know. Uh, but uh, look forward to a revamped Smoke Night Live, which will be even ten times cooler than it is right now. Ten times? Ten times not cooler than it is right now. So until next time, remember... Never, Never smoke. Smoke. Ah. See you guys on the dojo tonight. Peace out. Oh. Later. Oh.